Wednesday night saw the Max start their season awfully impressive. They put up 102 points, but now they play a Farmingdale State team, which is very good. Projected to go number one in the conference, and it's going to be a real test for this young Max team. Hello, everyone. I'm Charlie Benton, alongside me, Keeper Earlbaum, and we're back for Saturday night rivalry hoops in the Max Center Athletic Center. Yeah, Charlie, we were standing here right next to each other just a few nights ago, and we had a lot of question marks. There was a lot of skepticism. We saw what YU could do in the Jack Sekwa Invitational Tournament. They had a very impressive performance, but lost a couple of games. They came into this gym, and they dominated in every facet of the game. They really showed what they were capable of, and they have proved to us, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that they are legit, they are the real deal, and Farmingdale State is going to have a huge challenge on their hands tonight. Well, let's, go about, let's talk about Farmingdale State. They're very good. They're very well spaced, they're well spread out, and it's not just one guy who could beat you on this team. There are a bunch of good players, specifically Santos, the point guard. He could hoop, he could penetrate. They're just gonna be a tough game for the Max tonight. Yeah, as you said, they're projected to be the best team in this Skyline Conference. They stole a game from YU last year. They're a very, very impressive ball squad. And listen, they're very, very good at distributing the ball. They love to share the ball. They're not a selfish team. No player on their team averages more than 12.5 points. There's a guy, Santos, he drives into the lane and he penetrates to the three-point line. They have great shooters, they have great energy, a lot of defense. This is a very polished and impressive team. They're gonna pose a huge challenge to IU. This is gonna be a prime time game that you do not wanna miss. Well, it's Saturday night in the Heights. It can't get much better than this. It's the Max, it's Farmingdale State. It's coming up after this. We got lineups, we got tip-off, we got hoops here from Rivalry Night in the Max Stern Athletic Center. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be a celebration like we've never seen before. Deeply rooted in the Torah, inspired by our core Torah values, committed to academic excellence and geared to empower our students, the leaders of tomorrow. The flagship Jewish university is on the rise. A rising national rankings, soaring in student enrollment, launching top tier academic programs, and helping secure great jobs and impactful careers for our graduates. Hakol. I invite you to join the Yeshiva University community on Sunday, December 4th at our 98th annual Hanukkah dinner where we'll experience the impact and celebrate our achievements. This promises to be an extraordinary night and an incredible new space, an evening filled with entertainment, no speeches, and a unique experience that celebrates our Rise Up campaign. I look forward to seeing you there. Hello and welcome back in to the Max Stern Athletic Center for tonight's highly anticipated matchup between the Max and the Rams. Yeah, there's a lot of energy in this gym right now, Charlie. Obviously it's not filled to max capacity yet, but it seems like it's gonna be filling up. A lot of people are very excited to see what these Max can do, but this is some of their highest level competition that they're gonna face in Farmingdale State, a team that beat them last year at their own home turf. YU also stole a game from them last year, so it seems to be a very evenly matched game that we're about to see, and I think we are preparing for anthems, and we're gonna cut out. We'll be right back with you right after.
Welcome back into the booth. The starting lineups are sponsored by the Yeshiva University Office of Admissions. As you start your college journey, make sure you visit us online to check out all the great virtual events and opportunities we have for YU students and how you too can be a Maccabee. For the visiting Farmingdale State Rams, starting at point guard, the junior, number zero, Javon Santos. Starting at guard, the senior, Corey Powell, number three. Starting at guard, the senior, number five, Aaron Davis. Starting at forward, number 20, the senior, Trey Riggins. And finally, starting at forward, number 24, the senior, Nick Horowitz. Again, as we spoke about at the outset, Javon Santos, driving kick, but everyone on this team can beat you. Yeah, when you mentioned Santos, the offense really runs through him. He is the guy who's gonna be distributing the rock, looking for his other players to score. He is the heart and soul of this ball team. So now for the Max. It's gonna be the same starting five as it was Wednesday night against St. Joe's Brooklyn. Starting at forward, number 13, the freshman, Roy Itkovici. Starting at forward, number 22, the senior, Matan Zucker. Starting at point guard, the junior, Adi Markovic. Starting at forward, the freshman, number 52, Dotan Berdichev. And starting at guard, the sophomore, number 21, Zevi Samet. Now, we spoke to Max pregame and he had a little update for us. Max Zakon, that is. Yeah, we were talking to Max and some very exciting news for Max fans, no pun intended. Max said he could be back to play as early as Sunday. So watch out for that. I think the Max could have used him this game as they are playing some of their highest level of competition. But Max Zakam could be back by Sunday, breaking news. Very exciting to see what he could do and how he can contribute to this already stacked program. Absolutely. And getting announced now by the PA announcer is Roy Itkovici, who, such a young talent for the Max, played really well in their, in their game against St. Joe's Brooklyn. Obviously, Samet got a lot of the attention, as deserved with 40 points. But Roy's going to be a key piece of this team this whole entire year. Yeah. Samet played extremely impressively. Everyone's talking about Samet, but Roy is one of those guys. He's so composed around the rim. He's able to put the ball in the basket. He has a soft touch, and he has a high-level offensive package in his arsenal. Roy is only getting better by the day. He's going to be a key contributor to this game as well. As Zabby Samet gets introduced and gets a loud round of applause by the YU faithful. Well deserved. So we spoke about at the outset how expectations were sort of up in the air coming into the season. Last game did a lot to sort of pump up expectations now for the Max. This game is going to be a true telling point for the season moving forward of how this team is going to perform, how they're, how, how they're going to respond to pressure, solid defense, and a good, well-balanced attack. Yeah, it's all about the level of competition that you're playing against. Why you shoot a lot the other night, but they weren't playing such a challenging team. Farmingdale State is the real deal, a team that has given so much trouble to YU in the past. YU has to adjust their game plan and perform to the best of their abilities in order to snatch a win tonight at their home turf. So we got 20 minutes on the clock here in the first half. Players just about ready, the refs about ready. The fans are ready, we're ready. Saturday night hoops in the heights. Let's do it here in the Maxon Athletic Center as it's Berdichev for the Max and they'll start with the ball. Berdichev catches on the wing. Roy. Markovic surveys. Ball tipped away by Santos. It'll stay with the Max. Santos already showing what he could do on the defensive end. Some very active hands. He is the smaller defender, but if he stays aggressive, he could do a lot of damage. It's Berdichev with R Riggins giving him a little bit of room. Hits a cutting Samet who misses the shot. Rebounded by Trey Riggins. You can't help but notice the long wingspan of Riggins. His arms go out to the walls, it seems. Defense chance ring out from the crowd as Horowitz open for three. That's off to the right. Rebound is tipped by Riggins, and it's Davis. 
Santos shuffled his feet. He'll get called for a travel. A rare mental error there by Santos. Usually very composed, very on top of what he's doing on the court. The ref saw him shuffle his feet just a bit too much, and it's YU Max ball. For Digit now on the wing. Markovic, Zucker, inside, that's Salmon underneath. Two nothing Max. And how about that off ball screen to get Salmon that open look? I believe it was Roy who set the screen. Why are you all about moving without the ball, getting their open opportunities? As Davis says, anything that you could do, Zevi, I could do better. Hits his own layup cutting to the hoop. Aaron Davis, the senior out of Valley Stream, New York. Zucker, Roy, turnaround jumper, rims out. Roy didn't really set his feet there. He looked a little bit uncomfortable as he turned and took the off-balance jumper. Horowitz fouled on the ground by Markovic. Markovic has the tough task tonight of taking Javon Santos. As you watch here, he does a pretty good job on him, moving his feet. Slaps down on Horowitz's arms, so he'll go into the book with one foul. Powell inbounds. Santos, Riggins inside, Zucker on him. Berdicha with the help. Santos, a deep three, nothing but net. And the Rams out to a 5-2 lead. As we saw Higgins attracting all of the attention down in the post, allowed for Santos to have that open three as he's oh. double teamed. And Berdich of wide open down low. Uses the back screen nicely. I believe that was Samet on the screen. Berdich finishes inside. It's Davis. Farmingdale State weaves. Horowitz head down off one. Rims in. Bit of an awkward shot there by Hurwitz. He had it off the one leg like Dirk, but he got it to go. Berdichev, that's a three. A little short. Hurwitz comes down with the rebound and a look to push. Powell lost his footing. Berdichev will get called for the foul on the ground. You got to think that. One of the points to address in the Farmingdale State locker room was how to stop the force that is Zevi Samet. But YU hasn't really utilized Samet as much early in this contest. It's been a lot of team ball, a lot of off ball screens getting open in a variety of ways. Let's see how Farmingdale State makes adjustment during the timeout. Davis no good on the pull up. Zucker on the rebound. He's got two assists already in this game. It's Berdichev, Markovic. Berdichev again. Zucker pumped, goes left, out to Berdichev. That's another three. This time he gets it to go. So Dotan Berdichev got five points early, and the Max have tied the game at seven. It's Santos, Berdichev hedges. Davis now a catch and shoot three off the back iron. Rebound is going to go to Horowitz. Grab the rebound over two Mac defenders. And it's Powell. He'll pull up from 20. That's good. Powell showing an excellent bit of mid-range shooting. Something that he's been able to do, do so well for years now. It's Samet. Roy. Berdichev. Another three off left. Santos pulls the board and scurries past half court. Almost loses it, gets it back and will slow it down. It's Powell, head down, inside with the right, finishes. Max having a tough time defensively to open up. Again, all these Farmingdale State players have the ability to score. It's Samet, Roy. Berdichev thought about a three again. That would have been four straight possessions with a Berdichev attempt at a three. Five on the shot clock. Crowd letting them know. It's Berdichev again. That's good. 
So he's two of four from behind the arc. He lets the fans know how many points that was. Get you a big man who could shoot the tray ball. Such a versatile player is Dotan Bartichev as he stretches his floor so well. He'll get called for the foul. Horowitz on the drive had a step on Berdichev. That's his second. And Margasov looks to check into the game for the Max. First substitution of the game. Berdichev will take a seat with eight points. As we see Powell inbounding the ball, he has been the spark that has led Farmingdale State to get a lot of their points early. But he's also their best defensive player. He's come a long way offensively, but he's really known for his tenacious defense, locking down a lot of very special offensive players. Santos gets it on the inbounds. Now gets it on the opposite wing. Riggins, Zucker on him, uses his body nicely but can't finish the layup. And it's Roy now for the Maccabees. Zucker, open for three, decided not to take it. Backing down Riggins, finds a cutting salmon inside. He uses the glass for his fourth point of the game. Great recognition there by Zucker, trying to back down the bigger defender. He didn't really have the angle, but he saw the cutter. Poked away by Markovic. He's got Roy on a fast break. One, two, and throws it down with authority. Roy Itkovich, one, three, going up high, down low. And that'll get the crowd buzzing. Horowitz, Powell. It's Davis now. He gets by two. Little teardrop floater off back iron. Zucker with the rebound. Markovic cutting Samet, gets underneath and finishes with the right. Timeout, Farmingdale State, and the fans love it here in the center. 15 to 11, the max lead. And it's been Matan Zucker passing the ball, which has made a huge difference for the max. He's got five assists early on in this game. Yeah, Matan has played phenomenal basketball. Let's talk about that last dunk from Roy. He threw that one down with authority, and that's the kind of play that gets your team the momentum that they need to make a run. Great timeout call by Farmingdale State's coach. A very necessary one as well. But you saw the entire fan base stand up. You saw the bench standing up and clapping. Roy providing a spark of energy that could help the Max start to take a little bit more of a lead and separate themselves from the Farmingdale State Rams. Yeah, Coach Brandon Tomey for Farmingdale State calling that timeout and checking into the game for Farmingdale State is Kobe Thomas, number 15, as Powell head down inside, contact and one. So out of the timeout, Powell says, give me the ball, let me do it myself, and he'll go to the line for an extra free throw. Great play call there by Coach Tomey of Farmingdale State. Just like the doctor ordered, Farmingdale State almost got the three-point play. So Thomas tips it out. So he's off the bench and already making a difference. Outside, now he'll try a triple. No good. Markovic on the rebound. Markovic. Zucker. Goes left, Margasov. Markovic drives right, gets to his spot, uses it. Too strong on the layup. It's Santos now. Pulls up from the free throw line, extended, that's good. And Santos will hit that shot nine times out of 10. Very confident in his abilities from the mid range. It's Samet. Now Markovic. 
Poked away, he'll get it back. Zucker, two steps. Roy with six on the shot clock. Cutting, that's Samet for three. No good. Place ready to explode. Shot a little too strong. And here's Powell on the break. Adi ties him up. That'll be a jump ball. It'll stay with Farmingdale State. Or Batesh gonna check in for the max. And number 31, Michael Nocious coming in for Farmingdale State. Yeah, it's really worth acknowledging the perfect defense that Farmingdale State played against YU. Why are you really not able to get into their offensive rhythm there because of those active hands? It's Thomas. Good defense by Margasov. And Roy looking to push. He's got Sam with Santos on him. Santos, so solid defensively. Ball will stay here as he goes crashing into the crowd. He's okay. Yet another example of the Rams not giving Zevi Samet an inch of space, smothering him every time he touches the ball, not letting him have those three-point shots. Zucker looked like he might have carried there. Gets to his spot inside, pivots, turns around. No good. Oh, what a pass to Powell. He'll take it out, though. He'll collect, pumps. Off one foot, foul by Samet, and one. And the Rams are up two with the chance to go up three. Woo! That was a pretty play. Drawing the contact and one. I'll tell you, these guys like to shoot the ball off of one leg. I don't know if it's something that they practice, but they certainly got it down to a science. They've scored a couple of buckets early in the same fashion. Powell's got nine after that one falls. They'll take him out of the game and bring in number 33, Zamari McKenzie. Gov Landau in for the max. McKenzie, who just checked into the game, a senior, number 33, considered the most athletic player on this Farmingdale State Rams offense. He's someone who's able to give them a lot of energy off of the bench. A Zucker, not such soft touch around the rim, not being able to get it to go. That's a mid-ranger. Bottom. Walters. And just like that, the Rams are out to a five-point lead. So the Max gave a little bit of a run after the exciting dunk by Roy Itkovich. But it's been all Rams since. Margasov for three, too strong. And it's Santos. Has his head up the whole way down the court. Blows by inside with the left. Walters again. And Coach Diamonds might want to consider taking a timeout. Zucker. That's a 17 footer, no good. And here come the Rams. Ooh, solid spin move there. That's a triple. Too short, Batesh on the rebound. No to us sticking to Batesh up the court. It's Margasov. Backs his way to the low block. Still going. Zucker inside, fouled and won. A majority of the work there done by Margasov number two. Zucker this time able to finish inside. Great find there by Margasov. And Matan Zucker finally able to get something to go. He has struggled here early to put the ball in the hoop. He's gotta be satisfied about that one. Hopefully that can get him going as we approach the final 10 minutes of the half. So Javon Santos leaves the game. Aaron Davis comes back in for Farmingdale State. Let's talk about the mid-range shots for a minute. Mid-range seems like a lost art in today's game of basketball. It's all about the three-pointers now since the evolution of the game with Steph Curry, Damian Lillard. But sometimes it all comes down to the fundamentals. Those mid-range shots is where the Macs are getting killed right now. 
Zucker not able to really hit his, but all of Farmingdale State has been able to do their thing from the mid-range and hit those teardrops as well. Let's see how much of a difference that makes in this contest. It's inside with Walters. Boker on, and we just checked into the game. The fans love it. No good on the shot. Travel. And it's going back to the max. And Zevi Samet checks in for Roy Itkovich. Boker earning his stripes there. Doesn't get as many minutes as maybe he thinks he should, but making key defensive stops is exactly how you earn those minutes and show your coaches that you have what it takes. Great stop there by Boker. Land out. Boker. Had Margasov inside. He's wide open. Fans urging him to shoot. Off to Salmon. Pulls up. Jimmer. Bottom. And there's that man that we saw last game. Wasn't quite a three, but certainly a mid-range shot that can get him going. And you do not want to see Zevi Salmon getting hot because we all know what that looks like. It'll be Davis to inbound. Ooh, dangerous pass. Got away with it. It's Thomas. Plays a pick and roll with Walters, who gets it down low. Kick out to the corner. Three, two strong. Foul on the floor as Javon Walters got up there for that rebound. Yeah, he skied over all those max defenders. Did Walters. Really showing a lot of effort on the offensive glass. And it's going to stay the Farmingdale State way. It's Davis. Landau on him. Thomas, mid-ranger. No good. Rebound knocked around. It's Margasov, but he didn't see behind him. Smart play there by McKenzie. The swipe and score. Max thought they had to stop. McKenzie said, nope, not yet. And a rookie mistake from a rookie player there. Margasov not seeing the defender behind him. Samet too strong, Boker strong underneath though. Samet hasn't quite found his shot yet. He's got eight in the game, hasn't hit a three to, to this point. As Horowitz checks back in, Powell takes a seat. Yeah, very quiet eight this game. A lot of the fans are in these stands right now to see Zevi Samet play. We're pretty sure he's gonna show up at some point and he's made some key contributions and he's done a lot of great work off the ball. We're still waiting to see what he can do from beyond the arc. Now it's Landau getting a much bigger role this year than before. Samet for three. So as we mentioned it, Samet responds with his first three of the game. Right on cue, Zevi Samet making me look good. Inside, blocked by Ryan Boker. There's that defense again. Boker working extra hard in the paint and swatting that shot nearly out of the gym. So Nodiaz takes a seat after getting rejected. Powell is going to check back into the game. It's Powell now with Sam and Autumn. Horowitz bullies himself down low. No good. Gets his own rebound. Back up. That falls. And oh, quick steal. McKenzie again. No good on the layup. It's pandemonium down low. Who's got it? Who wants it? It'll go YU's way after it goes out of bounds. The mayor McKenzie. Timeout. Max, Coach Diamonds, wants to talk things over. As you see the replay here, Max have to be a little stronger with their rebound control. High and tight, make sure they really grab onto that basketball. Yeah, Coach Steinmetz has to be livid right now in that huddle, telling his players, just grab down the rebound, hold on to it, make sure that you're aware of your surroundings and don't give the ball away until you see that the defender is not behind you. Max doing a very poor job at that, something that obviously they must have addressed in that timeout. Hopefully looking to limit it as we enter into the closing minutes of the half. <laughs> and
as we saw the bucket there by Hurwitz. There was an outrage in the YU community over the fact that the recruiting team could not get Hurwitz to come to YU. It seemed like the name Hurwitz, obviously a Jewish name. Unfortunately for YU, he decided to play at Farmingdale State because he is a heck of a player. As Margasov takes a three, way too strong. We later found out that he is not Jewish, but he has a great grandfather that is Jewish. So still counts for something, but you can't win them all. Absolutely, he's a special talent as Powell. He can hoop, he's got 11. Leads Farmingdale State. Again, no one on this team averaging more than 12 and a half. But Powell with nearly that much with six and a half to go in the first half. Margasov, Landau, Samet off a screen, catch and shoot, too Oh, no, I thought it was too strong. It went in. He's faking me out out here, spectacular. Really had no time to set his feet there. He was on the run and he just chucked that one up. Ooh, but now Ooh. he gets crossed. Stays with Powell though. Gets called for a walk. Powell does not love the call. Max will take it. Nearly put Zavi Semin on a highlight reel with that killer crossover. But he was not able to translate and he shuffled his feet just a little bit too much. Lucky for Samet, as we could have seen that play on replay for generations to come. <laughs> it's Roy. Samet. Zucker now. Gets inside. Horowitz will get called for the foul on the floor. Something worth noting. The first few buckets of the game for the Max were all off of those off-ball screens. They were having the angle and their players were getting to the bucket at ease and finishing for the easy two. The Rams have done a really good job at limiting that and staying with those players on the cut. As now it's Zucker. Yeah, as you were mentioning, at the beginning of the game it looked like it was going to be easy pick into Samet. No, doesn't go. Out of bounds. But every time he shoots Zevi Samet, something unbelievable could happen. Always a collective gasp from the crowd. A lot of ooh ahs. That time a little bit too much ooh, not enough ah. It's Santos. Horowitz. Ooh. Saucy pass down low. And Cosgrove will put a bow on it. Pretty pass there by Horowitz. High basketball IQ play. Santos with the steal. Roy gave it away, it's a three on one. Santos, Horowitz, easy layup. Why you has gotta be careful here with those turnovers because it seems as if the Rams are starting to run up the score, create some separation. Margasov, Zucker driving, loses it out of bounds. Rams got it, Gov Landau checks back into the game. Margasov will take a seat. Horowitz with Markovic on him. Ooh. Markovic wears some contact to the floor. Horowitz can't connect on a mid range jumper. Markovic got it for the max. Roy. Zucker, solid spin move down low. He'll get called for the offensive foul. He used his offhand to create some separation. I don't know about that one and neither does Zucker. We'll see it here on the replay. Clipping with a little elbow maybe? Not too sure. Well that's why I'm up here and the ref's down there, you know? Santos now. Powell. Three from Davis. Off the back iron. Santos gets the, gets the long board. Davis. No good on the shot. Markovic, strong rebound. And he'll look to push for the max. Roy. Blows by his defender. Zucker. Spinning. They'll reset. Markovic a triple. 
Rims out. Who's it going to stay? Yep, it will stay. That ball did the toilet bowl. Looked like it was in for Markovic. He set his feet. He had a great angle and a great look. That one is going to fall nine times out of ten. It didn't work out for him on that particular occasion. Zucker boys his way inside and one. His second and one of the game. His fifth point. A four point game. Watch the replay here. Solid footwork down low. Loves his left hand as Max, Van, Max fans have gotten to know over the years. Something that we know about Matan Zucker is that none of his points come easy. He's always got to work for it. Oftentimes coming with a lot of contact. But that kid's a fighter. Santos blows but past Landau. Pass a little too hot for Kobe Thomas. It's Roy. Catches. Zucker at the free throw line. Markovic with the pump. Landau. Open. That's a deep three. Too strong. It's Riggins on the rebound. Santos penetrates inside. He's got it now. Deep three. So Javon Santos, we spoke so much about his passing. That's his second triple of the day. Doing a good job offensively for Farmingdale State. Zucker, Samet, that's a three, too short. It's Thomas now. Horowitz. Powell uses the screen. That's a free throw line. No. Nope. Markovic grabs it. Maxton Athletic Center a little quiet right now. Max have gone cold from deep. Off ball foul. And you mentioned that the center is a little bit quiet right now. I couldn't agree more. You hear an occasional cheer from the bench, maybe from the crowd, but I think I know exactly why that is. No Mama Terrell this year. No Mama Terrell, absolutely. She underrated how much of a role she played for the Max. You think they have any shot of having a 50-win streak without Mama Terrell in the crowd? Absolutely not. Hopefully, but they got a sign her. That's a tough layup. Sam at no good. Hasn't had it so much offensively today. Santos loves that mid-ranger and shows us why. It's a nine point game. It seems like we talked a lot about his passing and his ability to distribute, but we didn't talk enough about his scoring. Sometimes overlooked because of how good of a passer he is, but don't sleep on that guy as a scorer and a bucker getter. Samick gets blocked, but finishes afterwards. Interesting that Dotan Berdichov hasn't been in the game really since the start. He had two threes right away. Wonder why Coach Diamonds has left him on the bench. Maybe because his foul trouble. As that ball stolen by Markovic, up to Roy. Roy, tough take, no good on the way. Rebound, Zucker grabs. He gets fouled, is that gonna be an and one? It won't be because he missed and it was on the floor. That's a big boy basketball play from Zucker. He took him to the weight room down low. And he ended up retaining possession for his YU Max. Getting the recognition that he deserves from the crowd there. The test checking back into the game. Landau taking a seat. One or four to go in the first half. Rams up seven. It's Zucker. To no one in particular, so the Rams will get the ball back. Poor decision there by Zucker after a heck of an effort to grab that board as it looks like Coach Comey is going to call a timeout, talk things over with his team. And with that, we're going to send it down to the third member of our crew, the best dressed member of our crew, S.J. Tannebaum. S.J.?
Jackie Samet scored a personal record 40 points on 11 three-pointers. One of those tweets on Twitter was from YU student athlete Aaron Whedon, who said, just walked into the gym to check in on Zevi. He looks at his stats, and the stat sheet says, quote, I'm definitely not looking at my phone tonight. Got a shower and got to 1045 Mariv. Hashtag Chizuk, hashtag D3Hoops, hashtag Do Your Thing 21. We love to see that unique commitment by YU student athletes to their passion on and off the court. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you, SJ. Zevi Samet, very serious about his religion as well as his basketball. For Zevi, it's a lot bigger than basketball, and trust me, he's a very talented basketball player, but he's trying to change the culture and change people's perception on what this YU Max program is all about. He has made a tremendous impact at this university so far in his short time that he has been here. He's got 16 tonight. Max have 30. And I want to just talk about one of those last plays. Zucker had space to shoot the mid-range shot, but he limits his opportunities to score when he's backing down every single time because his defenders are leaving him a lot of space. It's Thomas off balance, can't get it to fall. Samet now, that's a deep pass. Roy can't corral. Last hit him though. Wait, we're gonna have a debate. It's getting controversial here. And now it's the max ball. I actually thought the initial call was the correct one. But what do I know? We really didn't have the angle there. Could have been the worst possible spot on the court for us to spectate that play. Markovic to Itkovic. That's a three. Batesh off the front rim. Rebound is staying with the max. I'm assessing a theme here. The refs saying that it is Farmingdale State's ball, but then retracting their statement. Might it have anything to do with the crowd's booze? So the shot clock is turned off, and Samet will hold for one as the crowd rises. Samet, cross, step back. Zucker, back down. Tough look, off glass. One second left, there'll be no attempt. At the end of the first half, the Rams up on the max, 37 to 32. But we got a very special interview coming up after this quick commercial break with D3 Hoops voter Ryan Scott, where we're gonna break down the first half and talk about the overall landscape of Division Three Hoops. You're not gonna wanna miss it, so stay tuned for the halftime show. We're gonna go to a quick commercial break. Max fans, this is Joseph Gittler, founder and chairman of Leckett Israel, YC class of 96. It's citrus season in Israel. We need to rescue millions of pounds of these citrus fruit to feed the needy just over the next few months. So please give us a hand. Help the winning team, Leckett Israel, and the other winning team. Go Max! It's going to be a celebration like we've never seen before. Deeply rooted in the Torah, inspired by our core Torah values, committed to academic excellence and geared to empower our students, the leaders of tomorrow. The flagship Jewish university is on the rise. Arising in national rankings, soaring in student enrollment, launching top tier academic programs, and helping secure great jobs and impactful careers for our graduates. Hakol. I invite you to join the Yeshiva University community on Sunday, December 4th at our 98th annual Hanukkah dinner where we'll experience the impact and celebrate our achievements. This promises to be an extraordinary night in an incredible new space, an evening filled with entertainment, no speeches, and a unique experience that celebrates our Rise Up campaign. I look forward to seeing you there.
Remax fans, this is Joseph Gittler, founder and chairman of Leket Israel, YC class of 96. It's citrus season in Israel. We need to rescue millions of pounds of these citrus fruit to feed the needy just over the next few months. So please give us a hand. Help the winning team, Leket Israel, and the other winning team. Go Mac! Hello and welcome back in to the Max Stern Athletic Center after a very entertaining first half, which sees the Rams up by a score of 37 to 32. And now we are joined in the booth by a special guest, Ryan Scott, D3 Hoops voter, who I had the pleasure of interviewing last year during the round of yep. 64 game, which unfortunately the Max lost. But Ryan, great to have you with us again. What are your thoughts on this first half of basketball? Well, I mean, we see, I came because it's supposed to be the two best teams in the conference, and I think we're seeing that tonight. Uh, shots aren't falling for Farmingdale, but that's really good for the Max because they have not been playing up to par yet. This has been certainly the worst performance so far this season, but they're only five points down, so they can turn that around. Absolutely, and now obviously expectations last year were extremely high for the Max. Yep. This year, not as much. But they sort of have overperformed. What have you seen with them to start the season? Well, it's a really strong team, and I think what everyone is noticing is they're running the offense a lot better. Um, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, which as you know, a coach, as fans, that's what you want them to be, be doing. I talked to Elliot before the game. He said he's unsure how you know, consistent the team's going to be because they're very young. We're seeing a little bit of that tonight, but the talent is all there to be really competitive. We saw that already with the games you played. Absolutely. And now... The D3 landscape in general, a lot of our viewers don't know as much about anyone but YU and the Skyline sure. Conference. So what it, what does it look like this year? Who, who should we be looking out for? Well, so my two big teams so far, Christopher Newport and Mount Union, have looked tremendous. Most teams are pretty rusty at this time of year because you only get a couple of weeks of practice before games get started. We're seeing that all over the place, but there are so many good games getting played. We saw that with Yeshiva going out to Illinois Wesleyan. Uh, there's a tournament in South Dakota this weekend. Um, and so good teams are playing each other, and we're going to get a real good sense of, of how good everybody is. Absolutely. Do you have a, a best player in the league yet? Because I know what a lot of people here think. Yeah, so we came to see Zabby, but you, you see Santos from Farmingdale has been playing really, He's really great. well tonight. He's a really good player. Um, obviously, you can score and shoot like, like Zabby can. That's really good, but I'd like to see him play a little more defense maybe. Um, maybe for the entire max tonight. They're, they're, they really need to step it up on the defensive end. Absolutely. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah. On a bit of a less serious note, you are no stranger to the restaurant scene right. in Washington Heights. You've had your fair share of exposure. So I just want to know, what are some of your favorite dishes? I think you ate earlier tonight, so I'm not sure right. if you're going to get before you hit the road, before well, you make your big two-and-a-half-hour trip. But what do you think are some of your favorite dishes and delicacies that you have enjoyed so far in Washington Heights? So I'll say when we were here before for the Illinois Wesleyan game, people were just bringing food over to us all the time. So I'm not even sure what I was eating. But the burger was fantastic, and everything that I put in my mouth was wonderful. So I'm happy to be back anytime I can be here. Absolutely. All right. So before we let you go, I want to hear your predictions for the second half. Um, I, I mean, I think Yeshiva can put it together, but they're really going to have to establish the post play. Um, Matan missed a few. I'm glad he hit that last bucket. That's going to be really good for him. But the Rams are missing a lot of shots. If those start going down in the second half, I think Farmingdale with the experience maybe gives these young Max a little bit of a loss tonight. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Scott, for joining us. Yep. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with halftime stats and second half action. Don't go anywhere. Hey Max fans, this is Joseph Gittler, YU class of 1996, founder and chairman of Leket Israel. The skies are reopening, so come and volunteer with us in Israel as soon as you make it here. Please also consider supporting us as you think about your charity. And of course, go Max! My story started with a letter in the mail. I took my first steps in New York and felt the energy all around me. I connected with my Rebbe on the first day of Sheer. 
My story was learning that the mitochondria is more than just the powerhouse of the cell. I made my painting from scratch, like really from scratch. My roommates came here from four different countries. We lit one menorah together. My story was practice every night. Cover to every night. Subway rides. City lights. In my story, my name was in the headlines. The bylines. The University Museum. My story was my internship at the Supreme Court. Dancing with the Israeli flag in Times Square. My story was participating in the only hackathon, not on Shabbat. The Career Center found me my first job at a top business analytics firm. My story was becoming best friends with my chavruta. And holding that NCAA trophy. My story started here. My story is just beginning. Hey Max fans, this is Joseph Gittler, YU class of 1996, founder and chairman of Leket Israel. The skies are reopening, so come and volunteer with us in Israel as soon as you make it here. Please also consider supporting us as you think about your charity. And of course, go Max! Hey Max fans, this is Joseph Gittler, founder and chairman of Leket Israel, YC class of 96. It's citrus season in Israel. We need to rescue millions of pounds of these citrus fruit to feed the needy just over the next few months. So please give us a hand. Help the winning team, Leket Israel, and the other winning team. Go Max! It's going to be a celebration like we've never seen before. Deeply rooted in the Torah, inspired by our core Torah values, committed to academic excellence and geared to empower our students, the leaders of tomorrow. The flagship Jewish university is on the rise. A rising national rankings, soaring in student enrollment, launching top tier academic programs, and helping secure great jobs and impactful careers for our graduates. Hakol. I invite you to join the Yeshiva University community on Sunday, December 4th at our 98th annual Hanukkah dinner where we'll experience the impact and celebrate our achievements. This promises to be an extraordinary night in an incredible new space, an evening filled with entertainment, no speeches, and a unique experience that celebrates our Rise Up campaign. I look forward to seeing you there.
rebounds for Kennedy, but take it back by, by Lifer. Give it to Terrell. Terrell! Get throwing Terrell two more! Hello and welcome back into the center. The Rams up five on Yeshiva. Halftime stats are brought to you by Leket Israel. Leket Israel rescuing nutritious surplus food for Israelis in need. Mr. Earl Bam, take it away. Yeah, in terms of points, we have Corey Powell as the leading scorer for the Rams with 11 points. Closely followed by Javon Santos, who has 10 points, and Nick Hurwitz, who has six points. And going over to the max, Zevi Samet with a quiet 16 points. We got Matan Zucker with seven points, and Dotan Bardachev with seven points as well. Going down to the assists, we got Hurwitz as well with four assists, as well as Santos, who also has four assists. Those guys are diamond for days. And for the YU Max, we have Matan Zucker with a whopping six assists, while Gabriel Landau also adding his own two assists. Both teams looking to improve on what was, I don't want to say a sloppy first half, but shots weren't really falling on either side of the basket. Neither of these teams have showed their best basketball, and I have a feeling that some of that might be coming in the second half, but it really is a testament to the fact that this is a defensive matchup. These teams are very, very hungry on defense. They're always looking for opportunities to tip the ball, to poke the ball out, to get on the floor, to get feisty, and they're doing a lot of that. So it's hard to get into your offensive rhythm when both teams are playing such intense defense. Halftime clock winding down. Zevi Samet wearing a number three on his jersey. In the first half, it was 21. I believe it was 21 in the first half. Interesting. Well, he's got 16. The Max are down five. 20 minutes on the clock. A winnable game for both teams, an important game for both teams. Second half action underway. And it will start with Roy Itkovich. Berdichev checked back into the game. Itkovic uses his body, pivots, pivots. Too strong for Zucker and it's Horowitz. Head down, inside. A little all over the place and Berdichev got a steal. Samet. Markovic. Inside to Samet, quick layup and one. He's got 18. Well, they started out in the second half very sloppy yet again. But then they followed it up with a beautiful set play, something that they were able to do very well in the opening minutes of the first half. Getting Samet for those open looks, courtesy of the off-ball screens. What is the ref saying now? So the free throw was good. Farmingdale wanted a sub, so the horn sounded as Samet was shooting the free throws. Unaffected, Samet knocks it down. And into the game comes number 14, Walters. Jill Vane Walters for Farmingdale State. It's Santos. Powell spins, turns, and shoots. Too short. Sam, it's got it. Berdichev. Markovic cross court. Into Roy. The double comes. He doesn't care. Strong off glass, no good. Up to Horowitz. Santos collects. Powell. Davis open for three, Markovic fell asleep, too short. Who's got the rebound? It's Samet, and he'll run. Ooh, thought about popping, spins, caresses inside, no good. 
Ball on the ground. Powell's got it. And he'll give it up to Horowitz. Back and forth we go. Davis another three. This time he connects. And Walters showing a lot of fighting spirit, getting on the floor, getting that loose ball. And good defense leads to good offense. The Rams really had to earn that one. Zucker no good. Samet soars in for the rebound. Zucker, they're disrespecting him, but he airballs that. Gives it inside to Itkovich. So Zucker, unfazed by his inability to hit the mid-ranger, grabs his own rebound and feeds it to Roy inside. Max Vans chanting defense. Horowitz. Santos again. Cross court Horowitz, catch and shoot. Nothing but net. That was a little too easy. And that form was as smooth and pure as you're ever gonna see. Holding the follow through. You could tell he's hit that one before. It's Zucker, it's Samet, pulls up, short. Samet's left a couple of those mid-rangers short today. Santos, Davis, a three. Nothing but net. And the lead is up to nine. And that's what we talked about a little bit before the game. Santos' ability to penetrate the lane and when the defense comes caving in, Kicks it out to that corner for the open three. Berdichev, open for three. No good. So the Rams off to a hard, hot start. Max, not as much. Davis again? This time he leaves it a bit short. A heat check there for Davis, but he wasn't able to convert. Samet, two steps, blocked from behind. He wanted the foul. Doesn't get it. Davis thought about bringing it inside. Kicks it out. Santos blow by. Kick out. Powell closed out. Two steps. Who's going to shoot it? It's Horowitz. Oh, that's butter. That is butter. Time out. Max. Rams up 12, and they're hooping. We're going to send it down to SJ. SJ, take it away. to former Maccabees player and current assistant coach Donnie Katz, whose wife Rifka gave birth to a baby girl recently. Mazel Tov to former Mac Donnie Katz, his wife Rifka, as well as current Mac's assistant coach, Ellie Katz. Thank you, SJ. Mazel Tov to the Katz family. That last possession there for the Rams really was a prime example of something that they've done so well for so long, and that is implement an unselfish nature in their locker room. They had a couple of open looks beyond the arc, but each one of them making the extra pass, looking for the even better shot, and they managed to get it to fall. Looks like a little bit of press pressure. Not that much though. Max get it over the timeline relatively easily. Berdych up to Markovic. Off to Zucker. Zucker inside. Gets that one to fall. Yeah, they're giving Zucker the Ben Simmons treatment right now, leaving him at about eight feet of space. But Zucker also recognizing that he can go in with a full head of steam and try to finish that layup. Sometimes it'll fall, sometimes it won't. That time it did. Santos, step back Jimmy. No good. It'll go to the max. Santos is quick. As Batesh checks into the game, Markovic will take a seat. Santos is listed here at five foot eight inches, but that does not stop him from being extremely effective. He's a shifty ball handler. Obviously we talked about his ability to pass the basketball and showing a little of his scoring prowess as well today. Batesh off the screen. Samet, that's a three. No good. And the shot's just not falling today for the Max. And they're gonna need to heat up quick. It's Santos. Powell. 
Back iron, no good. Zucker grabs the rebound and gives it up to Samet. Powell wants the double. Davis did not oblige. Tesh. Is that ball going to be saved? It is. It's Zucker. It's Samet. Open shot, as open as he'll get. No good. So he's gone cold. Max are down 10. And Santos will reset. Santos. Walters, kick out to Davis. Everything a little congested right now inside. With one second on the shot clock, he didn't realize. I didn't realize. Nonetheless, it's going the max way. We were so fixated on the game, it was hard to pay attention to the shot clock. I believe that is our first shot clock violation of the season. Max have to get going offensively. Only 39 points and we're six minutes in to the second half. It's Berdichuk. Zucker. Vitesh, that'll be an offensive foul on Zucker. He doesn't love the call. And you mentioned how the Max have to get something going offensively. And some real distinctions that we can draw between this game and the last game against St. Joseph's University of Brooklyn is the abysmal three-point percentage that YU is displaying this game. They are just 21.4% from beyond the arc, something that they're definitely not used to and something that they have to try to fix if they want any chance of coming back in this ball game and coming out of the gym with a W. It's Michael with the Tesh on him. Thomas, catch and shoot, no good. The Tesh. Rises for the rebound. And now it's Samet. Zucker. Got away maybe with a walk. Roy underneath. Strong off the glass. Athletic finish there from Roy. Going up on one side and finishing on the other. Roy obviously had that dunk earlier tonight. Showing what he could do athletically for this ball club. No. That'll be a jump ball as Batesh tied up number 15, Kobe Thomas. Margasov looking to check in now for the Maccabees. Zucker gonna take a break. Horowitz gonna take a seat for Farmingdale State. McKenzie checking in. It is extremely hot in this building as that'll be a foul. Itkovic doesn't like it, he's gotta be careful. We saw YU getting in some trouble with the technical foul last game, something that Coach Diametz was very displeased with. So everyone's got to keep their tempers down, make sure to respect the ref's call, even if you're not feeling like that inwards. First shot is good. Subscribe to Max Live on YouTube to make sure you do not miss any amazing Max games and highlights this season. And if you want to receive updates on Max news, join our WhatsApp group. The link is in the description of this video. Lead up to 10. That's Berdichev. Roy. Margasov. Inside to Batesh. Sloppy pass, and it'll go back to Farmingdale. Riggins now. Knocked away by Samet. The Tash saucy behind the back move. Up to Roy. Berdichev. Urged by the crowd to shoot. He doesn't. Samet. Contact. Nothing was called. He wanted a foul. Here comes Farmingdale State. Ball is lost by notice. Let's just talk about Oren Batesh for a second. His reputation precedes him as a premier shooter here in the Skyline Conference, but Batesh has done pretty much everything besides for shoot this game. He has gotten involved down low in the posts. He has had a lot of key defensive stops, and he's actually had some rebounds as well. 
over a lot bigger defenders. Berdichev, that was no good out of the hand. And back come Farmingdale State. It's Walters up to Thomas. Notice, Powell. That'll be a foul on number two, Margasov. It'll be going up. So Corey Powell will have a couple of chances at the free throw line. Gov Landau up to the scorer's table. Max are gonna have to figure it out soon. Yes. Time is not on their side. It seems like they're digging the hole for themselves a lot deeper, getting into foul trouble as we see Lando substituting into the game for Batesh. Batesh not getting all of the offensive looks that he might have wanted, but trying his best to rebound, to get some steals, and really just doing everything else to contribute to this YU Max basketball team. Horowitz will check back in. Powell will take a seat with 13 points. An impressive night. Again, just all around, so many different guys who could hurt you on this Farmingdale State team. Bardichov. Margasov. Roy gets to his spot. Too strong on the finish. Horowitz. Walters. Notias loses it. Berdichev grabs it. We'll give it up to Samet. Samet. Roy in the corner. Decides to take it in. Rises. Samet. Got it. Three. Short. Margasov on the rebound. And they'll slow it out. It's Berdichev. That's a moving screen on Margasov. And things going from bad to worse for the Maccabees. Ten and a half to go. Twelve point game. And it's worth noting that some of these closeouts from Farmingdale State are very impressive. Samet obviously with the 40 bomb the other night, but a lot of those were open looks and a lot of them were due to some pretty bad closeouts by St. Joseph's University of Brooklyn. Farmingdale State knew that that would come to bite them, not making the same mistakes. As there's another rebound grabbed down by Batash. He must have four or five rebounds at this point. Land out. Again, this game not out of reach yet. Roy thought about a three. Batesh thought about it as well. Now it's Landau. Roy from the parking lot. Not enough. It's no ties now for the Rams. Horowitz, Margasov stays with him. Dishes it inside to Walters, he'll get fouled. Established himself inside nicely, did Joe Vane Walters, and he'll get a couple chances. That's, I believe it's on Berdichev. And a brilliant basketball play there by Horowitz, and also a nifty display of ball handling as he drew about two defenders and he had a wide open man down low, resulting in two free throws. That is a veteran play there by Horowitz. Walters connects on the first as Natkin subs into the game for the Max. Coming into the season, people didn't think he'd have such a big role, but he's proved himself down the stretch in these games that have been more blowouts. And now he's getting a chance in a big time moment. And right away, involved in the box out as Roy Itkovich pulls down the rebound. Itkovich has been a bright spot for the Max today. Very athletic player. Radichev almost walks with it. Landau. Itkovich. Three's not gonna count. Natkin gets thrown down. Foul will be on number 15, Thomas. You'll see it here on the replay. And technical foul will be called now on Thomas. That's big, because the Max now get a couple shots and the ball. And the crowd has come back to life a little bit. They're gonna need to execute. 
in order to make this more of a game. Yeah, we see Thomas pretty irate there about the call. I thought he should have been happy. I mean, you see Roy hitting that three after the ball stoppage, and his foul prevented the three. But he was. So please give us a hand. Help the winning team, Leckett Israel, and the other winning team. Go, Mac! Nine seventeen to go in the Saturday night rivalry game. Rams up a dozen. Maxwell inbound, inbound the ball under the hoop after Walters got called for the technical. Samet still on the bench. Sperdichev, Landau, Natkin, Itkovic, and Batesh for the Max right now. Looking to spark a bit of a run. It's Natkin. Berdichev thought about the three. Natkin did as well. Two steps and up. Too strong. As some of the guards on this Max team failing to see the open man, Dothan Berdichev ran the entire baseline and was open on the left-hand side of the court. Landau gets called for the foul. Santos checking back into the game along with Davis for the Rams. And for the Max, Zucker, Samet, and Adi Markovic back into the game. Samet looked like he was running out of gas, running low on stamina there. They wanted to give him a break on the bench, and they're going to need him to step it up in a major way in these last few minutes to try to mount this comeback. It is extremely hot in this building. Shot's not going to count. Foul on the ground on Markovic. But it's going to be interesting to see if these players still have all this energy down the stretch. I don't know why the gym is as hot as it is. And I don't know why we wore cardigans tonight. That one's my bad. I did want to wear a suit, so I guess we got the lesser of two evils. Always difficult to coordinate with you, Charlie. First shot good from Horowitz. Walters takes a seat. Cosgrove into the game. And is that toe on the line? <sighs> Grasping at straws a little bit as he <laughs> knocks the second one down. 14 point game, eight and a half to go. Roy, Samet on the corner. Markovic. Foul called on Cosgrove. Bailed out Zucker a little bit. Santos showing what he could do on the defensive end. Markovic had that jab stack and he really sold it, but Santos stayed planted and he kept his feet on the floor, made sure to not jump, and Markovic couldn't go anywhere. Roy down low, established position. And the lead is now 12 again for Farmingdale State. And it's Santos. Max in need of a stop. Santos fouled by Zucker. Santos doing a great job at splitting the defense there, drawing the foul. Zucker's got to be careful. He's got three. Santos will shoot a one and one. Yeshiva have now fouled the Rams eight times. And Yeshiva last game were afforded with the luxury of going with a much deeper lineup. This game really going with a solid eight or nine man rotation. 
as they are down in this ball game. Samet catches underneath and he'll finish. So Zucker finds Samet. It'll be a timeout here. Lead is cut to 10. We're gonna go to a commercial break, don't go anywhere. Hey Max fans, this is Joseph Gittler, YU class of 1996, founder and chairman of Leket Israel. The skies are reopening, so come and volunteer with us in Israel as soon as you make it here. Please also consider supporting us as you think about your charity. And of course, go Max! Things getting interesting. 10 point game. Rams up 56 to 46. Last two possessions for the Max has been better. Have gotten two layups, one by Roy Itkovich, one by Zevi Samet. Something which we'd like to see a little more of. Just instead of settling for those outside looks, maybe trying something down low as Santos with the filthy spin. Horowitz will get fouled. Crowd wanted a walk. Adi's got to be careful. Crowd letting the referee know what they think of the call. A lot of hostility in this gym right now. Not that I'm one to talk, but I think it was the right call. I just think it was made a little bit late. I think he drew the contact and the ref was thinking about it for a few minutes and finally decided to pull the trigger on the call. Riggins to check back in. And YU cannot be happy that Riggins is back in the game when he was on the bench. That's when YU had the opportunity to do some more damage, but Riggins is a defensive force and also has been helping a lot on the offensive side of the glass. Batesh. That's a three, he can hit those. And does just that. Nine point game. Batesh was like a bunny rabbit running around the court. He flashed in the middle. He got the ball at the high post, passed it off. Perfect screen that was set off the ball. Horowitz just keeps his feet on this side of half court. Inside, layup missed. Who wants it more? It's Zucker. And here he comes. Batesh to his left. Back inside to Zucker, open layup. That's good. Timeout, Farmingdale State. Crowd getting back into it. And that defense by the YU Max was everything. And Batesh, after that huge three-pointer, passed up the opportunity to shoot the rock again and found his partner in crime, Matan Zucker, with a beautiful cut to the lane and a finish in transition as the YU Max have cut the lead down. And now it's 58 to 51 with plenty of basketball left. 6.53 left on the shot clock, or the game clock rather. And they're back in this thing. Matan Zucker, a big night offensively. He's got 11 points, eight rebounds, nine assists. Looking for a triple-double maybe. So Zucker on triple-double watch. It's Santos now for the Rams with a seven point lead. Powell, he's got Harwitz, gives it back to Santos. Roy on him, Walters, spins, open Harwitz, this is a big shot. Nothing but net, lead back up to 10. 
Talk about a crowd silencer there. Horowitz shushing the crowd just as YU thought it was getting some momentum. Markovic. Samet. Inside. Contact. And one. He'll get a chance for a three point play. See on the replay here, off one, bucket count and the foul. And it looks like we are witnessing the birth of a new chant for Zevi Samet. The YU faithful making their own rendition of the Big Sodic song. Free throw good. It's Powell. Falls. Roy gets called for the foul. Roy's got to be careful here, trying to plea his case to the ref. And the ref is having none of it. That being the 10th foul for the Max, it'll be two shots. For behind the scenes pictures and content you won't find anywhere else, be sure to follow us at Max Live on Instagram. Powell, with some noise from the crowd, doesn't let it get to him. It's good on the first. And Powell slowing down a little bit in the second half. We saw what he could do in the first half, and we talked about the offensive threat that he is, everything that he has in his arsenal. But he is coming back in a major way when it counts the most. Two for two at the foul line. Horowitz now on Itkovic. Markovic. Santos pokes it away, straight out of bounds. Sneaky defender. Very sneaky indeed. And that's what too much dribbling is going to get you into. Going into the baseline without really having a plan of attack. And Santos makes him pay. It's Zucker. Screen. Now Samet for three. Around the rim and out. Needed that one. Santos now on the push. Davis. Yep. Lead back up to ten. So a five-point swing in the matter of five seconds. Had Samet hit that shot, and had it been maybe an inch to the left, it would have been a whole different ball game. Markovic. That's a turnover. Horowitz back the other way. Santos will finish with the left. And just when you thought the Max had some momentum, a couple bounces don't go their way, and the lead is back up to 12 for the Rams. Why are you really killing their chances here? With Batash, he's got to hit it. Too short. Santos will slow it down. Powell. Horowitz. Roy on him. Walters with eight on the shot clock. Santos, that's a deep three. Yep, connects. And that is big. Timeout, Max. 69-54 in favor of the Rams. Quick commercial break. Do not go anywhere. fans, this is Joseph Gittler, founder and chairman of Leckett Israel, YC class of 96. It's citrus season in Israel. We need to rescue millions of pounds of these citrus fruit to feed the needy just over the next few months. So please give us a hand. Help the winning team, Leckett Israel, and the other winning team. Go Mac! Welcome back into the Max Stern Athletic Center. Rams up 15 on the Max with 4.17 to go. Just want to give some thank yous right now to Executive D Director Ezra Jacobs, 
Executive Producer Ari Schaff, Technical Director Aaron Traurig, Associate Director Moshe Rechester, Associate Producer Nadiv Toritz, Cameraman Shmuel Gopin, Ben Zuckerman, Rafi Spatonik, Ezra Emerson, and of course the sideline reporter SJ Tannenbaum. Still some time left, but the Max are going to have to move quick. Samit, Roy, can't get the layup to fall. And Farmingdale State will bring it up. It's Davis. Santos, that'll be a foul on Markovic. That guy Santos is a killer. He had that deep three to really put the nail in the coffin and extend that lean for Farmingdale State. And this one might be out of reach, out of reach as a result of his a very impressive play as he gets to the free throw line looking to shoot two. No good on the first. Landau will check in for Markovic. He's been up and down this game as Markovic. Solid on the defensive end, solid on the defensive end early on. Santos has 14 as he hits the second. It's Samet, and you gotta think if YU has a chance, he's gonna have to start doing some things. Offensive foul called on Landau, away from the ball. And as we approach the closing minutes of this game, and it looks like YU trying to implement a full court press. I mean, if there's one guy who could break it, it's Jevon Santos. But as I say that, YU gets a steal. Itkovich <laughs> will we'll throw down, but we'll call a dunk. It'll count for two either way. Bold, bold move to go off of two feet there, but he managed to punch it in. Foul call on Landau. Max Bench doesn't like it. And that was the kind of dunk that you and I could probably do in our primes. <laughs> Max fans unhappy with the refereeing. I don't know if they have much of a point. It's been evenly called the whole entire game. And as we see Powell at the free throw line, I can't help but mention the strength of schedule that YU has had to contend with. They lost their first game to St. Joseph's, Connecticut by a score of 69 to 60. They also lost to Illinois Wesleyan, and now it looks like, unless there's a miracle, they might lose here to Farmingdale State. But they've played some really impressive teams as Batesh catches and shoots and gets that one to fall. Not giving up just yet. It's Powell, Santos cross court to McKenzie, who cross court to Davis, that's a big shot. No good, who's got the rebound? Staying with the Rams, correct call by the referee. Uh, some of those teams that I previously mentioned were both ranked in all of D3, and Farmingdale State obviously the leading contenders to win this Skyline Conference. So although the record might not show it, YU is playing some good basketball, but they are just playing some really, really tough opponents. It's no Walters. excuse, of course. Walters, Batesh is hurt on the ground. Walters finishes the layup. They're gonna have to stop the game, or they're not. Batesh is gonna power through. Two and a half to go, 15 point game. Zucker, Samit, he'll try the three, no good. Grabs it though, underneath and finishes the layup. It's been tough for down, from downtown for Samet today. He's gotten inside a couple of times. He's got 26 to Samet. So still putting up numbers, but Max need a little bit more. As now he gets a steal, ooh, behind the back. Could he finish it? Euro inside, off glass, no good. Two shots. Woo -hoo -hoo. Sam it showing some of that ball handling. As he goes around the back. And Farm it's gonna be a timeout from Farmingdale. 
It'll be a full timeout. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. Samet getting ready to shoot his two free throws. YU down 13 with a minute 54. Not over, but getting there fast. One thing that has been troubling me is why YU has not decided to incorporate and involve Dothan Bardachev in the offense a little bit more. I mean, he played so well in the opening minutes of this game, and it, it seemed like his name has kind of been out of the conversation ever since then. Listen, he's a young player. He's going to get a lot of opportunity to show himself, to prove himself. He's got a ton of skill. Connected on the free threes early. Didn't have that same touchdown the stretch. So maybe Coach Steinmetz took him out. Yeah. Give some other guys a chance as Sam, it's good on the first. Yeah, that guy has a bright future here at Yeshiva University. He's gonna do a lot of good things for this program and his time will come. We're already seeing flashes, but I'm sure we're gonna see a lot more as we continue to watch the progression of that player. Davis easily gets past his guy. Corner, that's a big three. Takes the life out of this building. McKenzie. Sam, could he answer? That's a tough three. Short, he'll try it again. This time, gets it to fall. But it's not going to be good enough if they just trade buckets. Sam it now sitting on 28 points. It's McKenzie. Max have to get aggressive. 20 on the shot clock, 115 in the game. McKenzie. Now it's Powell. Santos will take it at the top with six on the shot clock. Powell with the screen. Santos blow by. Down low to Horowitz. And they use the full shot clock. Get a bucket. Stellar offense by the Rams. Landau, Roy, Vitesh. That's a three. That's good. Ten point game, 47 to go. Clock now stops. Everything clicking now for the Max, but is it too late? They seem to be surging but there might not be enough time on this game clock to really pull up this offset. Ball knocked around, Landau's got it. No, he doesn't. That'll be a technical foul on Roy for a flop. Correct call, he flopped. Fans aren't gonna like it, I don't blame him because they are disappointed with the way this game has gone, but the correct call by the referee. It'll be two shots and ball for the Rams. And flopping is really an art. Roy has to do a bit of a better job selling that. He's got to take a page out of Draymond's book. My apologies. I thought it was two shots. It's only one. The one shot was no good by Powell. The Max are going to have to start fouling. And you want to try to keep the ball out of Santos' hands. He's making all the right decisions here down the stretch with that high basketball IQ penetrating into the lane and handing it off as we saw in that last exchange between him and Horowitz. Salmon has to stick to him like glue right now. So the shot clock reset, I think that's what the referees are trying to figure out. There you go, back down to 21. Max could not let that thing hit zeros. That would be way too much time. Santos on the inbound. You got to think they have to foul. 
Here comes the double, the triple. Land out. Can't get the steal. I understand the thought process of getting the steal, but I just don't think there's enough time. You gotta just hope the Rams miss free throws. Yeah, I agree. Lando nearly getting that steal, and we saw his big interception play the other night after missing that three, but he got himself back into the play. Lando, always known for his hustle, his grit, and his determination on the defensive end of the floor. They're fouling him. Took a while for the refs to call it. I don't know what else they wanted Zucker to do. Horowitz will go to the line for two. And it seems like that every time the Max try to make in a little run, that Farmingdale State would just answer with big time threes. And it's gotta be frustrating and upsetting if you're a Max fan, having those rays of hope and sunshine only to be disappointed on the very next play. Horowitz good on the first. He's got 23, leading the scoring attack of the Rams. McKenzie checks out. Thomas checks back in. And I will refer back to what we said earlier in the game. The recruiting team here really missed out on a good one. Second shot, no good. So here come the Max with 22 seconds. It's Samet, step back three. That would be impressive. No good. Rebounded by the Rams. Santos, and he'll dribble it out. Max will fall to one and one in conference play. Rams one and zero in conference play. A good hard fought basketball game. Max won't win them all. Clock hits. The Tough game tonight for the Max. They fall to the Rams by a score of 80 to 69, and it just seemed they just didn't have it tonight. No, they did not. They came into this game red hot with some very high expectations, and Farmingdale State made a statement by saying, you know what, we're going to cool this YU Max team down, and we're going to make sure that they do not have any more momentum going into these next games in the Skyline Conference. And at this point, they're the team to beat. Farmingdale State proving themselves as the top contender in this conference. And YU is going to have to prove themselves if they want any shot of winning this conference. Listen, Max fans got really used to winning on that 50-game winning streak. But it's not going to be that easy. And that's not the rule. That's the exception, that 50-game winning streak. This team is good. They fought hard. They're missing a big player. Nothing to hang their heads about. But they do need to improve. Yeah, and the Max have a long way to go, but they are a very young core squad. They have not played together for so long. They still have a lot of chemistry to build, and I'm sure that'll just come with time. All right, thank you so much for t tuning in tonight. Again, the final score, Farmingdale State 80, Yeshiva 69. Catch all Max games in the future here on Max Live. Thanks for tuning in, and have a good night. See ya.